Hello, I am Zyra Rose, and welcome to this ZRTV video review of the Samsung Odyssey HMD. Just so you are aware, no one has sponsored this video, and I bought the item in this review at full retail, so this is purely my own personal opinion and nothing more. Let's get started by talking about the categories we have today. First, we have comfort and build quality. Next, we have displays. Then we have audio quality followed by controllers, and finally, tracking. First thing I'd like to do is show you the Samsung Odyssey. If you haven't seen it, I'm, I mean, you probably have, but if you haven't, that's what it looks like. It's pretty simple. It's probably my personal favorite headset out of all the first-gen headsets. Um, it's better than the Oculus or the HTC, and I, I love it. It's great. Like, it's the best headset I have, but... So let's start talking about the uh, comfort and build quality. First, I want to talk about the build quality. The build quality is nice. I like this headset because unlike other WMR headsets now, although this can be a little bit of a drawback, but also a bonus, is that this headset doesn't have the hinge, so the uh, face can't lift up and fold up like other WMR headsets. But at the same time, it's also a blessing because then it won't break there's not a hinge there that can break and I like that and overall the build quality seems pretty good it doesn't it doesn't have a whole lot of rock it doesn't have a whole lot of movement everything's pretty solid on there I like it. it it's good it feels when I put it on it feels very sturdy and like uh solid on my head it doesn't feel like wiggle it, it doesn't wiggle it doesn't it, it stays firmly in place and it's great so I like it Next, I want to talk about the uh, what I've heard called the PSVR-style headband. Now, this headband is personally my favorite way to uh, mount a headset to your head. Like, it's more comfortable because instead of putting all the pressure right here around your eyes, the pressure comes up here on your forehead, and then it just hovers over your eyes, just barely touching the skin there, and it's so much better. I mean, like... For heat, like it, you sweat less, you uh, you feel it less on your face, you feel less pressure. It's great, and sweating less is worth it alone. That is, because you know if you're playing an active VR game, sweating can become a real problem, and having a headset that helps you sweat less is definitely a way to go. It's I, I like it. Next, I would like to talk about the leather padding or the fake leather padding, as it is. Um, it's what they chose to put around the face pad up here on the uh, head part, on the forehead mount, and on the backrest. Like, they all have this uh, nice fake leather uh, padding, which, in my opinion, is better than any headset that uses a foam padding, because foam paddings just soak up sweat, and then you, it just gets stuck there on your face, and you just feel this wet mess on your face for hours as you're playing, and it's just terrible terrible this is all you know this this vinyl and so if you uh get sweaty and get this sweaty you can literally just take it off and wipe it off with a rag and it's clean and it's it's dry and clean and there's it won't get your face wet it doesn't hold sweat there and it's great it's much better i like it better i think it's much more sanitary than the foam but that could just be me. Other people may have different opinions, especially depending on how much you sweat as a person, because I don't sweat much, but when I play VR, I sweat more than I normally do. And so, especially when I'm on my VR treadmill and actually walking in VR, uh, I really sweat. And so, to me, it's important to have a headset that doesn't soak up my sweat. Like, it is so important for my headset not to do that. And so I am very happy with this headset. It's great. So the next thing I want to talk about is uh, something that I modified off my headset. So I'll edit in some pictures so you can actually see what it looks like and on, on the stock version, and then you can see the comparison to mine. Um, there were nose flaps right on in the nose hole for the headset. There were these little flaps that uh, came out right here, and they folded over, and you would have to push them out of the way of your nose or let them kind of clog your nose as you used it which was not very good like it 
it really bugged me. And I heard people say that they could uh, push them out of the way and it wouldn't bug them as much. But for me, when I pushed them out of the way, it still bugged me terribly. So I cut them off with a pair of scissors. I have no regrets. I love it. I'm glad I did it. But I wouldn't recommend doing it yourself because it'll probably void your warranty or anything else you might have on it. And then it'll also let a little bit more light into the nose flap. Not much. Just, just a little bit. Me, personally, it doesn't bother me at all because th this headset has very little light seepage in the first place and I really like it. So it doesn't really bother me, but, you know, like I said, I don't recommend doing it. Another thing I'd like to bring up real quick is that the cable for this headset is significantly shorter than its competitors. Now, it's not terribly short, but it is shorter. And now, me, personally, I think every headset should have like a super long cable, like a 16 foot, 20 foot, something like that. Every headset should have that. So to me, this is kind of disappointing, but at the same time, most of my games are either seated or I'm playing on my VR treadmill. So, you know, it, I don't have to have a super long cord to do that. But I can say I am disappointed about the length of the cord and wish they had thought about it and put a longer cord on it. And so I've got one more thing I'd like to say about the comfort of this device, is that out of all the first-gen headsets I've played on, this is the most glasses-friendly headset I've played on. All the ski mask style headsets, like pull off your glasses when you take them off and suffocate your face and push them up against your face really hard. And this headset is... It still pushes them against your face, but so much less than the other headsets. And it is so much more comfortable with glasses. And when I take this headset off, it actually doesn't take my glasses off with it. Like, I can uh, put this headset on. And then take it off, and my glasses stay on my face. It is wonderful, it is comfortable, it's easy to use. Um, so for anyone who wears glasses... Uh, out of all the headsets I've tried so far, granted I haven't tried all of them, but out of all the headsets I have tried, this is the best one i found for glasses. Let's move on to our next topic. The next topic is displays. So what this headset has is dual 3.5 inch AMOLED displays at 1440 by 1600, which is a much higher resolution than the Oculus Rift. It, it has a great resolution. It looks so much better when you look through it. Like. It's so much more pleasing to look at for long periods. Like, I can play this so much longer than I can play my Vive or my Rift. Like, I, it's just so much easier to play for long periods, and I love it. Then, on top of that, it has Fresnel lenses, like most other of the first-gen headsets, and it has an IPD adjustment, which, in my opinion, is one of the most important things on a headset, is having an IPD adjustment. Now... Granted, if you're close to standard IPD, you don't need to have an IPD adjustment, and I am close, but I'm a little under the standard IPD, and so for me, it makes a world of difference. Like, it, it may only be a slight bit under, but being able to adjust it to my actual IPD is, just makes a world of difference, and it really helps. By the way, if you don't know what IPD stands for, it's interpupillary distance, which is the distance between your pupils. And it's pretty important because in VR, if it's not matched up, it'll make the picture more blurry. And when the picture is more blurry, it'll give you more of a disconnect and cause more motion sickness, which, you know, is the enemy to any VR gamer is motion sickness because that stops you from being able to play. And you want to be able to play as long as possible. One final thing about the displays and lenses is the God Rays. Now, on this headset, the God Rays are significantly less. They are barely noticeable compared to headsets like the Oculus, for example. Um, they are just much, much better. If you don't know what God Rays are, that's where you have a bright white or light colored image and then a dark or black backdrop, and then the uh, white pretty much glares off over the black, creating these God Rays that as you move around, they move around and reflect with it. And on this headset, it is much less noticeable and much better. The next topic I would like to talk about is the audio quality of this headset. This headset has built-in AKG headphones. I personally love these and think they're better than any other headphones I've heard on the first-gen headsets. 
I think they're a great headphone. They sound full, rich. Um, they do 3D audio. They're great. I love them. The only thing I have any complaint about is that they just don't fold out all the way. Like, like the Oculus folds out all the way, but these don't. But it's not really a complaint. I can deal with that. It still gets on my head just fine, comes off just fine. It's great. Next, I'd like to talk about the controllers. These controllers have an interesting design with a touchpad and a joystick. Now, personally, I prefer a joystick. That's my personal opinion, but the touchpad is not a problem. And having the touchpad and a joystick allows this to be more compatible with us uh, Oculus games and HTC Vive games which is great out of the box, but it's still not supported with all the games, but either way, I think it's pretty nifty, but personally, I would rather just have a joystick. Just, that's just me. But anyway, the other buttons, it has a menu button, it has a Windows button, then it has a grip button, and then it has a trigger button. So it's a pretty standard uh, setup other than the joystick and touchpad. Um, it's pretty simple, it fits with most VR games, and it works with most games, so it's pretty good. Not all, but it works with most, it's pretty good. Um, but yeah, the thing about this controller is it's... The, the thing I have to say negatively about it is that it's just not very comfortable to hold. Like, I mean, it's not bad, don't get me wrong, it's not like you're holding this horrible thing that's just, you just hate holding. Like, it's just, you can't forget it's in your hand. Like. Like other controllers, like the touch controllers for Oculus, you can just forget those are in your hand because they're so comfortable to hold. These, you're never going to forget they're in your hand. They're just, they're there, they're bulky, they're kind of uncomfortable, but they're still not a bad controller. They're just not the best controller. So, I, I, I like them. I have no real complaints other than that, so it's not bad. And our last category is tracking. And I'd like to talk about the tracking capabilities of this headset and how plug and play this headset is because of its tracking. So first of all, um, if you, as you may know, with the Oculus or the HTC Vive, their tracking happens through towers and uh, sensors that you have to put up on your walls or on your desk or in the corners of your room, wherever you can put them to best cover your area, you have to set up these towers. and. That, that takes time, and, and you have to figure out where to set them up, and run extensions, and it's, it's so annoying to have to do, and it, it takes so much time. But this headset is unique, and it tracks through something called inside-out tracking, which is done through these two cameras on the front of the headset. These two cameras track the orientation of the headset, and also they track the positioning of your controllers. And the thing is, is... Yes, this headset is not quite as good as tracking as the others due to the fact that it can't track behind you when you're not looking behind you, but most games that you play, you'll constantly have your hands in front of you, and if you put them behind you, it'll only be there for a couple seconds, and the controller has sensors in it that'll keep tracking for a few seconds after it goes out of sight. So say you gotta reach behind your back and grab something, or reach down to your side and grab something, you can still do that just fine, and it won't be a problem. So like I said, most games you won't have any problem with tracking, and I've only lost tracking a couple times, and it was through my own my own problems that I, I did something that I probably should have, shouldn't have done, but I did anyway. Either way, it's perfectly good tracking. I love it. Now, because of this tracking system, this headset is nearly plug and play. Nearly. Like, all the other headsets, you have to hook up the base stations, you have to run through setups, you have to do so much stuff to get it ready to play. This headset, you can literally just plug it in, and then click standing or sitting, and then if you click standing, you'll do a guardian or a boundary setup, and otherwise, if you click sitting, you won't have to do anything. You just click sitting, you're done, you're ready to play. It is that simple. Plug and play. Plug, click, play. Simple. Most headsets, you know, if you want to take it over to a friend's house to show it off, you, it would be very hard, it would be a lot of trouble, but this headset, if you want to take it over to a friend's house, if you just have a high-powered laptop, that's all you need. Just take your laptop and your headset, you're good to go. It takes a few seconds to set up, and then you're ready to show your friend VR, or whoever you're showing VR, you're ready. It is very simple, and in my opinion, the easiest to set up headset, and I love it for that.
And so that wraps up this review with me saying that I highly recommend this headset, especially to people with glasses. And if you're not looking to buy a second gen headset and you want a first gen, this is definitely the headset to go with. Better than either of the other choices in my mind, and I think it is completely worth it. If you like this video, please hit like and subscribe. If you dislike this video, feel free to do that too. Thanks for watching, and I will see you next time.